so in this lecture we shall see some more applications of of linear independence of characters okay so uh, recall that in the previous lecture we had proved uh, using so in the previous lecture we proved trace k over k is non degenerate so i don't know the pairing Right, we prove this trace pairing is non degenerate right? and as a corollary of this so as a corollary of this we saw that the ring of integers is a free z module of rank n this extension degree so this is what we saw last time and so today we will see some applications of linear independence of characters so let's recall what the statement was right so let g be a group and l be a field right so we have homomorphisms chi1 up to chi n from g to l cross right so then these are linearly independent as elements of maps from g to l right this is the statement okay so the first theorem the first result we are going to prove in today's class is is called hilbert 90 okay so let k over k be a galois extension with cyclic galois group okay and let's also assume that galois is generated by sigma and sigma has order n okay so the galois group is z mod nz and we are calling the generator sigma okay so this is our assumption let beta be in k then this norm beta is equal to 1 if and only if beta is an element of the form alpha by sigma alpha for some alpha in k okay so let us prove this right so if let's do the easier case first so let's assume that beta is equal to alpha by sigma alpha right so then we know that norm k over k is of beta is a product over all embeddings right capital k into k bar okay so let's say tau tau of beta okay because this is a separable extension in general we had this result that uh, the norm is product over all embeddings to the power of the k over k the inseparable degree yeah but here there is no inseparable degree so therefore right 
But now the embed since k is a Galois extension, the embeddings are equal to the Galois group. Tau of beta. Right. But this we know that the Galois group is just sigma to the power i of beta, which is equal to okay. So let's just substitute for beta alpha by sigma alpha times sigma alpha by sigma square alpha, right? Because sigma of beta is equal to this thing and then it goes on up to sigma to the n minus 1 alpha upon sigma to the n alpha which is equal to alpha, right? But then these terms keep cancelling and alpha cancels with the first one. So, this is just equal to 1. Okay. So, the real assertion is the converse. So, let us prove the converse. Uh, so, conversely, assume that norm k over k beta is equal to 1. Right. So, now let us consider the characters. So, the characters are uh, 1 sigma sigma square up to sigma to the n minus 1 right are linearly independent right so these are maps from we view them as maps from k cross to k bar cross right each sigma is a homo embedding of sig sigma to the power i is an embedding of k into k bar so we can just restrict it to here yeah. so the so in particular that means so when we took a look at a sum like this so one means identity okay plus beta times sigma plus beta times sigma beta times sigma square these are scalars all right plus sigma square beta times sigma cube and so on right so this we can view this as a map from k cross to k bar And this map is non-zero, right? Because if it was zero, that would mean that these will give these are coefficients inside k bar, right? Yeah. So this will give a linear relation between these characters, identity, sigma, sorry, this one, sigma, sigma square, and so on, which is not possible. is a non-zero map from k cross to k bar, right? So thus, there is some theta in k cross such that this map evaluated on theta is non-zero. So what is this map evaluated on theta? That's I theta plus beta times sigma theta this is not non zero okay so let's call this element alpha So let us compute what is sigma alpha, sigma of theta plus sigma of beta into sigma square of theta plus sigma of beta into sigma square of beta and so on.
to sigma n of theta, but sigma n is identity, so this is just equal to theta. Okay. So now let's so this implies we just multiply with beta on both sides. Now, this over here is equal to norm k over k beta, which is by assumption 1, right? Because norm is the product of all the conjugates, right? So, this is just equal to, so we can bring, bring the theta over here and write in front, and we notice that this is exactly equal to the element alpha. So, this implies that beta of sigma alpha is equal to alpha, which implies beta is equal to alpha by sigma alpha. Okay. So, this is a simple check you can just. Okay. So, this completes the proof of theorem. So next let us prove, so we our aim is to see an application of this theorem, but before that let us write a proposition. So let k be a field and n strictly greater than 0 be prime to the character, be co prime with characteristic of k. So, assume that k contains k contains a primitive nth root of unity. Okay. So, let alpha be a root of x bar n minus a where a is some element in k. So, then k alpha is an extension is a Galois extension of of k with Galois group over k uh, is isomorphic to z mod d z for some d which divides n. Okay, yeah. So let us prove this. And more and one more thing, and alpha to the power d it belongs to k. So alpha to the power n we know is in k because alpha to the power n is exactly a which we are assuming is in k yeah but we are saying there could be a smaller d yeah so let's prove this so proof right uh, since alpha is a root of x to the power n minus 1 the other roots are zeta alpha, zeta square alpha up to zeta to the n minus 1 alpha. Okay. So, where, so let zeta in k be a primitive nth root of, of 1, right. So, all these are distinct because zeta is primitive, right. If any two of these become equal, then that will contradict the fact that zeta 
then it will show that zeta to the power i is equal to 1 for some i strictly less than n and positive yeah so that is not possible because we are assuming that okay. Uh, right, so this implies that uh, the polynomial x bar n minus a has distinct roots, okay, has no roots, has no multiple roots here. Yeah. which is seem easily implies that k alpha is separable over k. Right? It shows that alpha is separable over k and therefore k alpha is separable over k. Yeah? And on the, okay. So, also note that, so k alpha is obtained by, by adjoining all roots of x bar n minus a to k, right. In fact, we have just adjoined alpha, but as soon as it contains alpha, since k contains zeta, it contains all the roots, right. So, this implies that k alpha is also normal. So, this implies k alpha is Galois, okay. okay, yeah. So, now there is a map. So, there is a map. So, let us say it is a map of sets first. To z mod n z. So, what is this map? So, given any sigma, yeah, sigma is completely determined by what it does on alpha, right. And uh, since alpha satisfies this polynomial, sigma of alpha has to be some root of this polynomial, right. So, this implies that sigma of alpha is forced to be zeta to the i alpha for some i right and so we can just send sigma to this i okay so now i claim that so right now this is just a map of sets yeah and uh, this is an inclusion so this is an inclusion this is an inclusion right because as if sigma comma tau comma sigma both map to i right so this implies sigma of alpha is equal to zeta to the i alpha this is equal to tau of alpha right so this will force that sigma is equal to tau so there is an inclusion yeah so finally we claim that there is a group homomorphism okay so let's just check that so suppose sigma maps to i and tau maps to j. So, let us see what happens to let us say tau compose sigma. Yeah. So, we just have to apply it on alpha to see. So, when we apply it on alpha this is equal to tau of sigma of alpha is zeta to the i alpha, but zeta is in k. Right. So, that means this is equal to zeta to the i into tau of alpha which is equal to zeta to the j times alpha. I am sorry i plus j. Right. So, this implies that tau compose sigma maps to i plus j. Right. So, thus this is a group homomorphism. Thus, this is an injective group homomorphism. Homomorphism. Right. Yeah. So, uh, in particular, this implies that. So, thus, the image is cyclic. So, this implies that because Z mod N Z is cyclic, Galois K alpha over K is isomorphic to Z mod D Z. Right. Where D divides N. Yeah. And so, let's say so let sigma be the generator right uh, so be not be the generator so let's see 
I mean I want to say let sigma be the generator. So is isomorphic to z mod dz, but the subgroup of order d is, is actually generated by n by d, right. So what I am saying is the subgroup of z mod nz, it has precisely one subgroup of order d, right, is generated by n by d, right. So therefore, so let sigma be the element in the Galois group k alpha over k such that sigma of alpha is equal to zeta to the power n by d times alpha, right, yeah. So then sigma is a generator of this, right. So then sigma generates the Galois group. And also sigma of alpha to the d is equal to sigma alpha to the d which is equal to zeta n by d times alpha to the power d which is equal to alpha to the power d. So sigma fixes it that means the whole Galois group fixes it right. So this implies that alpha to the power d belongs to k. Okay. So we have proved all parts of the proposition right. So this completes the proof of the proposition. So this completes the proof. Okay. Yeah. So the main theorem application we wanted to see of Hilbert theorem ninety is the converse of this. Okay. So let's see. So theorem. Uh, the same hypothesis okay let me just write it down let k be a field and n be a positive integer be co prime to characteristic of k Okay. So, assume once again k contains a primitive nth root of 1. Okay. So, let k over k be a Galois extension which is cyclic and of order n okay so then there exists alpha in k such that alpha is a root of x to the power n minus a with a in k and this extension k is equal to k alpha so every cyclic extension we can write it in this nice form okay that is the point of this theorem right. Assuming that the base field k it contains a nth primitive nth root of unity. Okay. So let us see a proof. Uh, so let us compute norm k over k of zeta inverse okay. So once again let me just start with this yeah. So let zeta in k be a primitive nth root of 1. Okay. So then norm k over k zeta inverse. So zeta is in k. So zeta inverse is in k. And recall that if we took an element in the base field, then norm is just raising that element to the power of the extension degree right because it's just multiplication the the multiplication by a map is just a diagonal map right and zeta is in k 
right? So this is equal to zeta inverse to the power k over k, which is equal to zeta inverse to the power n, which is one. The roots of the irreducible polynomial of alpha over k are so I can get all the roots by applying all the elements of Galois k over k, right? So that's alpha, sigma alpha, sigma square alpha, and so on, right? Yeah. So why is that? So if we take any Galois extension k over k, and let me take any alpha in between, so I can look at k alpha, right? So if I take if p of x is the irreducible polynomial of alpha over k, yeah, and beta is any other root of k of x, p of x. So then we can define a map from k of alpha to k bar which sends alpha to beta. Let us call this map tau. And I can extend this to a map from k to k bar, but then the image is going to land inside k, so that is k tau tilde, right? And obviously tau tilde of alpha is equal to beta, right? So this implies we can obtain all roots. all roots of p of x as elements of the set uh, tau, til, tau tilde alpha where tau tilde belongs to Galois k o k. Right? But now this set, this set is equal to zeta alpha, zeta square alpha and so on. And this will go up to zeta to the n minus 1 alpha, right? As Galois k over k is cyclic and generated by sigma. So, but these are all the roots of x to the power n minus alpha to the power n. Okay? Yeah? So, and uh, also note sigma of alpha to the power n is equal to sigma of alpha to the power n, this is equal to zeta of alpha to the power n, this is equal to alpha to the power n, right? So, this implies that alpha to the power n belongs to k, yeah? So, let a be equal to alpha to the power n, then x to the power n minus a is the irreducible polynomial of alpha over k, right? So this implies that uh, k is equal to k alpha, right? As both of them have the same extension degree, right? Okay, so this completes the proof. So we have given a nice characterization of cyclic extensions of order n, yeah. When the underlying, when the base field, it contains a nth root of unit, primitive nth root of unity, yeah. So that's important. So let's stop here for a minute.